Welcome to the third episode of Popcorn and Whiskey, a show about movies and whiskey. And Joe can't stop laughing because this week we're doing dope. <laughs> and I'm excited, if you can't tell. Can um, <clears throat> can we talk about what you're wearing real quick? Um, yeah, so we watched this movie, Dope, and it was about the like 90s hip-hop era... Uh, that kind of uh, left their imprint, I guess, on three teenagers who are growing up in present day, and it's their coming of age story. Okay. Um, yeah. So, to in homage of the homage of the hip hop homage, I guess I'm keeping it. Keeping it real. Oh yeah. I mean, I, not real. I guess keeping it. Yeah. Gangsta. Gangsta. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. You know. Well, I mean. You I was, look like you're straight out of '90s. I'm like from like '81. Oh, I'm. I'm oh. just trying to confuse. I'm '83. Okay. Um, this is from the '90s. That T-shirt? Yeah. That survived. <laughs> Unlike most people <laughs> from my neighborhood. No, oh my god. Um. <laughs> took a turn for the worst. We have now set the theme for the yeah. entire podcast. No. Um, so this podcast is about movies and whiskey. Sometimes it's mo- mainly about movies. movies. But, I mean, who doesn't want to drink yeah. whiskey yeah. while talking about movies? Yeah. Who? I mean, Come really. Come see me. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the This week we're doing Buchanan's. Uh that's Neither funny. one of us has tried this. I no, never had it. Um, but what it does say, I, can we? Le, okay, it so it says it's supposed to have an aroma of dried peach, butter rusted, roasted, not rusted, roasted. That would be gross. Yeah, I'll roasted roast nuts, rust. cocoa and spice, poached pear and honey and spice finish. So I guess we're gonna really. <laughs> there is a shake the shit out of this sc- bottle. Scotch malfunction. We should have taken that out, right? Yeah, I don't... That's, like, the weirdest... It's, like... It has a screen on the top, because it obviously doesn't want you to get its whiskey. But it's not going to stop um, us, because I'm going to pull some out for my homies. That's what we're... No, sorry. That's we should have had it. I didn't want to waste any. All right. Yeah. So gangster. Here, cheers. Uh, 12-year-old Buchanan's. I like it. For a blend, it's actually like I'm gonna do a double one. It's really good. It's like pretty smooth. You can tell no, it's, it's aged. Good. It is good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Wow. It's uh, and it's great over ice. Like that little bit of water, I yeah. feel like, just mellowed it completely out. Wow. Um, Buchanan's Twelve Year. It's a blend. For real. It's blended. Glasgow. Scotland. Um, yeah, I like it. It's beautiful, yeah. Um, so, so it's very smooth. So this week we saw Dope. Uh, Joe knew nothing about the movie going into it. Um, I was more kind of like, let's go see Dope because I was obsessed with '90s hip hop and it kind of the movie actually like reminded me of high school, like. Yeah. And the. Well, not me, because. Well, the. But. The director... Um, My high school was a little bit different. So. Rick Famuyima. I don't want to screw up his name. Sorry, bro. If I did. Um, he's Nigerian. Grew up in Inglewood. Oh, it's no kind, way. Yeah. It's kind of his, like... Almost like an autobiography for him. Like, it's his, like, homage to Inglewood and uh, 90s hip-hop. I'm sure anyone who grew up in that era... Um, and if you're a hip hop fan, it's like, you know, nothing has repeated that, that era of music just hasn't happened yet. No, not really. Um, and, and, the, and the movie was, it was kind of like a, you know, it was, I, I didn't really know what to expect except sort of what I saw in the preview and you didn't know what to expect at all. So we were both kind of yeah. went into it almost blind and I mean, I, I loved it cause it was, it like hit. Just like, you know, it hit a chord with me just, you know, from high school and everything. So, for me, I liked it more, I think, than Joe. At one point, when we left the movie, um, 
Joe was like, you know, at points I thought that the soundtrack was better than the movie itself. Yeah, the which, soundtrack was awesome. Oh, the soundtrack was amazing. You but, know, I, what's what's really cool is like I recognized a lot of the music throughout the movie, yeah. and even the stuff they wrote for the movie. It was yeah. it was so good, um, and I can now see why they advertised the straight out of Compton movie during it for the movie. Which that the movie. movie looks awesome too. I'm so excited oh, for that yeah. movie. That movie looks incredible. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, the director Famu Yima, he had he used to do a bunch of movies in the '90s. He did like uh, The Wood and Brown Sugar, um, mm-hmm. kind of those like those like black black movies where it's you know they the budgets aren't huge. They don't expect to like blow out the blockbusters. But I thought this one didn't really feel like that. This felt more like a like a legit indie flick. It really did uh, feel like an indie flick, and you know, in the beginning um, of the movie itself, I honestly thought that it was set in the '90s. Oh, me too. Yeah, I was like, I was thrown off. Like when I saw the characters and they were dressed in you know '90s. The the main character has a flat top and. Yeah. They're all wearing like, which first of all, whoever whoever did the uh, wardrobe for that movie, like, oh my God. kudos to that. Like, they killed it. it. Yeah, they for killed real. it. And there was a point right off the beginning where I was like, wait a minute, I thought it took place today. And until one of the like trio of the main three said something about Justin Bieber. Oh yeah. Then I, mean, I was like, oh wait a minute, it actually does take place now because I was confused up until then. Yeah. Because they were, like, riding their bikes, and they were, like, the old school, like, BMX style. Like, I feel like so many kids now, they don't ride those. They ride, no. like, mountain bikes and stuff or road bikes. Well, you know, when I was a kid, I did have the, you know, well, I was a teenager in the 90s um, throughout my age. But um, I had one of those bikes. Yeah, me too. Like, the, and I had the... Uh, With the pegs on there. The and pegs. The, oh, yeah. And you, your friend would either... pegs on the front and the back. Yeah, your friend would either ride on the back... Stand on the pegs, oh, or yeah. in the front, he would sit, sit on, on the handlebar. She, I'm gonna say yeah. she, just because it's equality day, so love is going around. All right, that's Two right. To the that's Supreme right. Court. That's it's so about awesome. time. Um, <laughs> no, um, I mean, I thought they hit that part of it on the head. Um, the storyline itself was like kind of goofy and like, yeah, it had it had like very important kind of like racial kind of uh, socioeconomic kind of yeah messages in there but at the same time it was like these kids that were like geeks who were basically couldn't fit in at their own school um, came together because of like hip hop from the 90s right which brought them together which yeah. is like the total like complete they were just so odd together the one guy um, uh, that played what's his face um Jig, um, oh, he kind of looks Jib. He Red like kind of looks Indian, but he's not. He's like you know. What I'm talking they about? even yeah, they commented about that in the movie too. Um, Cause I like at I mean, one point I thought he was Indian, and then I'm like, nah, I don't think that's him. But it's the same guy from uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. What? He was like the bellhop guy, like the main character. No way. That's him. That's awesome. Yeah. He's so a- I think that kind of made it feel like an indie film too, because that that whole right. like uh, genre is he's in a lot of those like, and he does really good. And I thought he did great in this. And I thought the trio in general did really good. I think so. I think they worked well together. And um, you know, honestly, like I. I don't like movies where I can go in and I can predict. How things how are gonna, everything yeah, is going to unfold and yeah yeah and this was one of those movies where I think they did a brilliant job of the writing and just everything uh, kind of collaborating together um, where you weren't guessing the ending before it actually happened and you didn't you it, there was a point where I almost didn't want it to hit that climax yet like I wasn't right. like I was enjoying it where I was like. Oh, just let it keep going. Like I don't want them to figure it all out yet. And I think they they kind of did that for the most part. They did. Yeah. Once you thought it was about to end, and once you thought it was about to be like, okay, well, this is what you know. 
they're gonna <clears throat> they're gonna set up for a you know chain of events that'll finish it off but then right but then something else happened yeah and everything kind of tied in together and uh i think that was definitely one of my favorite parts about the movie the um drug dealer guy who kind of started off in the beginning he's actually asap rocky which i didn't even realize until i came home what yeah like i was looking at him and i'm like why is this guy so familiar looking? And I'm like, is he in another movie? Like, so when I came home, I IMDb'd it, and I was like, wait a minute, that's freaking ASAP Rocky. I was like, I knew he looked familiar to me, and with he, he didn't have his grill in and everything. So, and his hair was like a little different. He didn't have like the twisties that he normally has. But yeah, that was freaking ASAP Rocky. Wow. Um, were grills big in the nineties? Hell yeah. Were they? Yeah. Grills? Yeah. I thought that was like an early 2000s. I don't know. I went to a hood at school, so. Grills. I haven't had a grill since never. So. <laughs> I actually wanted a pair for our wedding photo that we took. I thought that would just be hysterical. If I grilled there was, in the name. Okay, so I. Should have bought grills for this. Drop the ball. My grill. My grill. <laughs> no, but like. Um, I also, when I imdb it, I found out that Pharrell wrote the song that the band sings. Like, the three main characters, they're, like, in the 90s hip-hop, but then they have a punk band, which See, I thought also was kind of, like, bizarre kind of, and, yeah. like, cool, though, in a way. It was kind of weird, because I was like, they're in the 90s hip-hop, but then they... I figured, like, one would be a DJ, the other would be, like, right. like dropping the beatbox, and then yeah. somebody would rap, but then they played, like, punk rock. I mean, it was... It was honestly really catchy. It, it was. Grew on me. And then... And then the second time they played. Well, then I realized freaking Pharrell wrote it. So, yeah. It's going to be catchy as hell, and he's going to win an Oscar. Pharrell, like, so... He's one of the most talented. He's so talented. He and is. I guarantee that... I'll be surprised if he did, yeah. if he loses the Oscar. Just... For real, yeah. For just, just based on he wrote another hit for another movie. Mm -hmm. Like, that's catchy. And real quick... Can I do a shout out? Yeah. Okay. So Pharrell, if you if you see this, <laughs> can you come on our show? Oh my God. Would that is Please. that that's legitimate? Pharrell, Pharrell, dude, come Pharrell, on. Pharrell, I'm like. Because we're happy. Speaking of '90s hip hop, uh, Noriega and the Neptunes. That's before anyone even knew who Pharrell was when he's on the Neptunes, and he killed it. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Our nerd. Yes. I remember nerd. Yeah. He was so good. Um, what was that song he came out with, Snoop Dogg? He, he's had a song with... Oh, Beautiful? With Snoop Dogg? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really like that song. No, Sorry for I thought it. he was... I like, love all your other Drop songs. It Like It's Hot. Maybe that wasn't him. Was that it was him, too? Yeah. Drop It Like It's I mean, hot. he has like 700,000 million songs. Um, well, what's cool about him, and I, we're, I mean, we're getting off subject, it doesn't matter, but um, Pharrell was one of those guys that he was, uh, he was like Bruno Mars. He, uh, he produced and he wrote and yeah. all sorts of stuff behind the scenes for a long time. And then, bam, you know, yeah. he, and it serves him right. Like, he's, yeah. he's so good at what I mean, there's does. a reason they asked him to be a part of this, and I'm not sure if there's like a pre kind of relationship there or whatever but i think the collaboration of uh the director pharrell the other people involved asap rocky yeah. freaking i love zoe kravitz and oh my god i freaking love zoe kravitz we don't we don't need scarlett johansson in this because <laughs> no, we right. zoe kravitz. yes exactly yeah i'll take either one of them in either of all the movies that are ever out I like Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, she's great, and she did <laughs> she so did hot. great, and she, um, yeah, I thought the movie was good. I mean, I would give it like a me personally because it it hit like a personal note with me with high school and hip hop and um, you know like growing up in that sort of like it's us against the world kind of society. Um, yeah, like I I would give it a three and a half for me because I thought. To me, it was just as enjoyable as Jurassic Park, just on a different level. Um, yeah, which I guess Joe. Um, I mean, you didn't know what to expect going into it. I so didn't. Hopefully, you were pleasantly surprised. Well, I mean, the, some of it was definitely kind of like could have 
done without it for sure. Yeah, this is what I'll say. Uh, and sometimes, like, um, you know, I'll have friends uh, invite me to movies that I know absolutely nothing about. That happened actually about two weeks ago. Um, but I think my favorite part about it is um, a lot of the trailers will basically explain, yeah, explain the entire the movie. movie. Yeah. How it ends, how it starts. Right. Um, so I'm in a way I'm really glad that I didn't go and I didn't see a trailer I didn't know anything about the movie so I can go in and I can have a clear mind when I go into it it actually allows you to pay attention to the movie a little bit more yeah and I think ultimately um, I'll for not knowing anything about the movie and not really having a lot of hype ar- about or around the movie for me personally I'll probably say a three out of four yeah I mean, like, I think movie. it's going to get some Oscar buzz other than the music. Oh, f- for sure. I mean... It was a hit at Sundance, and and I think it's been pretty well received so far. Um, this is only the f- first full week, I guess, yeah. going into the second week of its opening. Um, and not not to give any anything away, no spoilers whatsoever, um, but I have a lot of respect for one of the actors... Who, the guy who played AJ, and I really wish I could remember his name, but I, the first time I ever saw him, he was in a Spike Lee movie. Oh, yeah, yep. And he was, uh, but the movie I saw, it was more like a theatrical production that was just filmed. It was about him being uh, Huey Lewis. Yeah. And Huey Lewis, of course, is um, the guy who created with, like, the Crips. Yeah. Or something. But um, I absolutely fell in love with this, kind of like the docudrama or whatever you want to call it. This production that he did, um, which I still to this day I go back and I, I try and find it uh, because I was watching like um, like each. By the way, something. this red has no significance. <laughs> I was gonna say because um, <laughs> we in Cali yeah. and uh, <laughs> but um, I gotta walk the dog later. You know? <laughs> I want to make it home. Go with that. <laughs> no, I'm changing right after this. But uh, I don't know. Like I have a lot of respect for him. So as soon as I saw him. You know, he's so brilliant at what he does. He doesn't really do a lot of stuff, but when he collaborates with brilliant directors, and, like, this this director is, is amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I like how he portrayed everything. Yeah. But um, when you have an actor that's definitely worked with a, a brilliant guy like Spike Lee put into a, a wonderful film like this, um, I I don't know. I was, uh, I liked how the, the twist at the end. Yeah. You know, uh, w- was put together just with this guy. Um, if you if you go out and see it, like look for it. I think it's called like the Huey Lewis story. But this is Huey a, it, Lewis, like Huey Lewis in the news. No, it's maybe it's not Huey Lewis. Yeah, I don't think it's Huey Lewis. It's something though. No, it's Huey. No, oh, maybe. I want to Google it now. No, whatever. We'll That's figure right. it out. If you know, comment. Sure. Yeah. It's not our fault. But look for it. Yeah. It's a great movie. Um. So next week, we're not really sure. There's a couple movies that are coming out. There's Ted 2, which we might go see. There's uh, the movie about the guy and his dog, like the war dog. Did you see that preview for that? That one looks pretty good. It's like a a kid whose older brother has a dog that was like a bomb-sniffing dog or something with him in war. Yeah. I love those movies. Uh, Um, A guy and his dog. That makes two of us. And then um, the new Terminator comes out. The Terminator. With Arnold, actually. Yeah, the chopper. Come so. with me if you want to live. <laughs> so I'm excited for any of those. Terminator um, Genesis. And once again, we'll be on YouTube at uh, YouTube slash Popcorn Whiskey. Uh, if you want to come on the show, let us know. If you want to send us whiskey. For real. You yeah. don't even have to tell us. Just mail it to us. Uh, if you want to be on the show and you want to bring us whiskey too. Of whiskey, yeah, that's awesome. That's always fun. And Pharrell, seriously. Like, yeah, Pharrell. Pharrell. Or Nicki Minaj. What? I like Nicki Minaj. All right. (laughs) Joe's keeping it gangster. All right, we'll see you next week.